although I have had a few dreams that I know have come directly from the Lord, I can honestly say that I have never had a waking vision with my eyes wide open. The first vision while lying on my bed was to the north, the second vision was to the west, and the third vision was to the south. It was the last vision that was the most repulsive, causing me to rise from my bed in heart-stopping horror. Yet, the succession of these three visions, immediately following one another in a brief span of less than a minute, clearly indicated that the visions were one. The interpretation of the vision came rather quickly, intensifying the moment and leaving no doubt that God had given both the vision and its interpretation. Although to this day there has been no explanation from God as to the cause of the calamities, it is certain that it will happen having a significant impact upon the world. I have purposely waited upon confirmation from the Lord before going public with this vision. As a Christian, I am confident that no matter how difficult it gets in the days ahead, we will be shielded from all psychological trauma, flaming arrows of the evil one, and given strength to stand firm in our faith. The one who bought us with a price has given us a living hope to carry us through. Praise God! The Visions As I lay upon my bed with eyes fully open, I looked to the right and I saw a dimly lit room. The room was lit only by candles and a battery-powered lanterns with red covers. I could detect a silhouette or shadowy existence of at least one person, perhaps others hidden by the darkness. In my mind, I immediately knew there was a power outage and that this was their only form of light which gave me quite an eerie feeling. Immediately my head moved to the second vision, straight on, where there was still a dimly lit room as before. But this time, a person, not visible, is pouring water from a small cup into the hands of a woman. While only her hands were visible, I could see that she was using the small amount of water to wash her hands. In my mind, I immediately knew that there was no running water. At this point I only perceived that water was scarce. Then once again my head immediately turned to the left and to the final vision. Although this vision was the shortest in duration, it has had the longest lasting indelible mark upon my soul. Again in a dimly lit room I saw clearly the shape of a man and the head of an infant or child. In my mind's eye, I perceived that the man was about to, or in the process of, devouring his own child. In my mind, I knew immediately that starvation had reached such an epidemic level that people were driven to devour their own children. There was biblical accounts of people devouring their own children, see 2 Kings 6.29, and historical evidence of such happenings here in America with the Donner Party's wagon train snowbound in the Sahara Nevada mountains in 1846 resulted in cannibalism, along with past reports of such atrocities in North Korea. But to bring it to the modern day among civilized people of the West somehow makes it even more repulsive and devastating to one's psyche. No electricity, no running water, and no food. First of all, the electrical gadgets and appliances we have come to depend on would no longer work. Computers, cell phones, TVs, and music would all fall silent. Facebook users would be left in the dark. All of your industries that depend on electrical power would stop. There would be no power to pump the water. There would be no way to refine oil to power our automobiles and trucks for deliveries. Suddenly, everything would stop. There would be no way to heat or air condition our homes, and all security lighting would go dark. What an eerie feeling. A city left in the dark. Secondly, there would be no water. How many times do we wash our hands daily to stop the spread of bacteria? How would we bathe? wash dishes or clean our teeth. How would we even live without water? Look it up, not very long. Then finally there is no food. We as a society have become accustomed to going to the market once or twice a week to get groceries. The market shelves would become bare overnight. Even restaurants would soon run out of food and need to shut their doors. 
Most households, mine included, could possibly go two weeks without replenishing their food stock. Friends, that does not even give you enough time to start a decent garden. In a very short time, these shortages would cause mayhem and gross lawlessness while the strong and well-armed would take from the weak. Indeed, if these visions are valid, then a great distress is coming upon the land. Who can stand? What could cause such a calamity? With no clear word from God as to what could cause such a distress, unknown since the beginning of the world, the human mind races forward in an attempt to supply the needed answer. Could it be another world war of biblical proportion with global nuclear exchange? Or could it be an atomic bomb detonated in the upper atmosphere to knock out the entire electric grid? Or could it be devastating so-called natural disasters called by the hand of the all-powerful God unleashed upon a depraved and wicked world? Perhaps it's not important to know what causes it, but only to know that there will be a great distress as prophesied in Holy Scripture. See Matthew 24, 21. Furthermore, it's important that those in power will use it to their advantage. Even today, the current administration has said, never allow a crisis to go to waste. And so is the thinking of those in power. What will it cost the common man for a drink of water or a piece of bread? How much would the common man be willing to pay? Caesar only required a pinch of incense and the words, Caesar is Lord. How much would those in power require today? Would it be less or would it be more? Never allow a crisis to go to waste. So what is the answer for the God-fearing Christian? Should he start stockpiling food and water, plant a garden, buy a generator, or withdraw to the mountains? Perhaps we would do it all. But that's not the final answer. We as Christians must learn how to stand firm in our faith, proclaiming to the world that there is only one Lord, and His name is Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Nothing must shake us from that faith. I would rather die in the presence of mine enemies than to deny the faith. I would rather be interned in a FEMA camp than turn my back on the one who gave me a new life in Him. I would rather lose my head than call anyone else Lord or take his mark of allegiance. God help us to stand firm. Dear friends, let me encourage you to secure a copy of my latest book, Stand Firm, Godly Counsel for the Last Days. God bless you, my friends, and remember to stand firm.